Today I'm going to present some results from a Nordic project we had on group housing on horses to promote animal welfare and also human safety. To keep horses in groups is beneficial for many aspects. It promotes the horse's well-being and their health. It makes young horses easier to handle. It prevents development of stereotypic behaviors. And actually, social housing of horses is mandatory for young horses at pasture in Sweden, Denmark, and Switzerland, and perhaps even some other countries. However, group housing is not the common way of keeping horses. And one important reason for that is the fear of injuries. The owners are afraid, especially if they have a valuable uh, horse, that it will be damaged by kicks or bites from another horse. And it's obvious that such kicks may cause severe injuries. But in this Nordic project, we wanted to find out whether this fear was justified or exaggerated, and also if we could find some ways to group horses in a way and manage them to reduce this risk. And I'm going to present some results for you uh, on the effect of age, the effect of sex or gender, and social stability in group housed horses and also a baseline study on 100 ba uh, group house horses, which gives a kind of prevalence data. Uh, but first, we needed to develop a scoring system for external injuries to be able to score the injuries uh, in a similar way for all the studies, and uh, we also wanted to... Uh, to record the severity of each single injury. Okay, so here are the categories. We landed on five categories from uh, category one. It just involves hair loss only. Uh, and to the most severe one, which uh, the category five, which is extensive injury with long-lasting uh, uh, fun uh, loss of function or even death to death. To the horse, and the categories in between are, uh, are <laughs> graded uh, from uh, the category two, which also is a very moderate injury. It's not uh, uh, damage uh, which uh, goes through the skin; it's uh, in the skin or a minor swelling. While the category three is a minor laceration or a contusion with obvious swollen parts whereas category four involves a laceration with uh, injury to deeper tissues or of such a size that it uh, would, be, uh, would require surgery. Uh, we tested uh, this system using photographs, and we had uh, access to 43 students, uh, and they scored, uh, each of them scored uh, 40 uh, pictures, and they did it twice, and we changed uh, the, the order of the pictures shown to them. And uh, we had this, uh, we kind of uh, found that the general was a high level of agreement, both uh, uh, in between the observers and also for one observer from one time to the other, and also with the golden standard. Uh, this is uh, the baseline study. Uh, all the things I'm going to show you here are, uh, are published data, but this is the first time it's presented together. Uh, this baseline study was 100 riding horses of different breeds, all of them in Norway. They were kept in 20 groups at 14 different farms. And to be included, the group size had to be at least five horses, and they had to be kept in the group for at least four weeks. And we examined five horses from each of these 20 groups. 
In total, we found 308 uh, injuries. Uh, 28 horses did not have any at all, so these 308 uh, injuries were found on 72 horses. And uh, as you can see here, uh, most of them, the, the vast majority is in the category 1, which is just superficial loss over here. Uh, and you can also see here, uh, sorry, this pointer doesn't work, <laughs> Uh, that some horses really has very many injuries. And the worst of horse in this study was actually a young stallion. And it was a bit quarrelsome and uh, wanted to tease other horses and uh, therefore was um, subject to object for being bitten. Uh, then over to the... the groups we composed especially for this study. The first uh, research question was, should young horses be kept in same aged or mixed aged groups? Uh, here we used um, 10 pairs of groups. They were in different countries, but on each premise we had one. We had two groups which was um, matched when it comes to uh, to composition of the groups. So we had um, uh, we, um, ten of these, uh, of five of, of these pairs were uh, young mares, and five of the pairs were young geldings or, or uh, colts. And half of them had an extra adult horse with them, and group size was three to eight and always matched on, on the farm. And this adult horse came in addition. Uh, all horses were examined before they were regrouped for injuries and lameness. They were, uh, they were looked at again the day after uh, mixing and uh, after four to six weeks. And there's also done behavioral observations to look at aggressive uh, interactions uh, after this fifth or six weeks, and uh, then for um, uh, one hour, uh, for, yeah, for two hours in three consecutive days. Uh, the results here are that most injuries, uh, they occur the day after mixing. And within these uh, groups, uh, we found only category one and two injuries, 95% of them being category one, and no other horses were lame. Uh, there were no significant group effect on recorded injury. So that is, uh, the number of injuries did not decrease when an adult animal were, was present. Uh, but there were more play behavior and more injuries in male groups. And these were young horses. And we found also that uh, they played more. Uh, they were more aggressive encounters in same age groups, even though this did not uh, lead to injuries, more injuries. But because of this, we will uh, sum up to say that uh, there is a reduced risk of injuries if young horses are kept together with an older horse. So to the effect of gender. Should mares and geldings be kept in separate or mixed groups? Here we used uh, triplets. So we had six triplets and one triplet is one group with four geldings, one group with four mares, and one group with two geldings and two mares. Otherwise, the, the set, setting up was quite similar to the one I um, uh, presented before. So we examined the horses before grouping, the day after, and uh, then again four to six weeks later, and uh, we did some behavioral <laughs> observations. Uh, here we found uh, also that the injuries were just in the category one and category two, uh, and there were no lameness. 
Uh, there was not any significant effect of gender on, on these uh, injuries, uh, but there were some other effects. Uh, mere in mere groups tended to have less injuries, and geldings and mixed group horses played more than the pure mare groups. So due to this, we can't say that we should recommend or not recommend to keep mares and uh, geldings together. And of course, there are incidents where some geldings show sexual behavior that could make uh, it uh, not uh, uh, favorable to, to mix them. But due to the, the risk of injuries, uh, it's um, no reason that they shouldn't be grouped together. Uh, so to this uh, study then done in, in Denmark by uh, Janne Winter Christensen and co-workers, uh, they looked at the effect of social stability or instability. So here uh, we had 15 groups of uh, horses, of three horses uh, each. They were all young warm blood mares, two years old. Uh, there were seven stable groups, which was a control. But in the other eight groups, each week one horse was moved to another group. So this went on for seven weeks. And after each regrouping, there were some, uh, some behavioral uh, studies and, uh, and injuries uh, were recorded before the first mixing and after the seven weeks. Uh, also here, the vast majority is category one and there is a few category two injuries and none in the more severe category, categories. And no lameness. We did not find any significant difference on injuries between these treatments. However, there tended to be a higher number of aggressive interactions and also injuries in unstable groups. Uh, all of these horses uh, were kept on pasture and they did not have shoes which could have affected uh, these results. Uh, they found that play behavior varied more in unstable groups, and there was an obvious effect of horse, that some individuals being more aggressive than others. And another interesting aspect of this study was that the aggression levels neither decreased nor increased during the study, meaning that horses neither was um, habited to or becoming sensitized to frequent regrouping. Uh, we also studied the location of injuries. When we went out to the groups and, and uh, scored injuries, we also brought a sketch, uh, a drawing of the both uh, sides of the horse and, uh, and marked where on the body the, the injuries uh, were found. So the horse on uh, the left is from the test groups and also therefore are the injuries which occurred within four to six weeks after regrouping. And to the, to the right is the baseline study, which is all injuries found on the horse. Uh, as you can see here, there are some differences between these uh, uh, two pictures. Um, uh, you can notice that more injuries are found on the hind limbs than the front uh, limbs. And the majority of injuries are on the body. But there are some differences. And uh, when we did some um, to look at differences between uh, uh, breeds, we found, um, we actually found some. So um, here we merged uh, all other breeds uh, in, in one group pair and, uh, and uh, had the Icelandic horses and the warm blooded horses, which were the breeds we had the most individuals from. Uh, other effects, uh, our uh, friends from uh, Finland uh, were to look at uh, enriched and barren environments and the effect on in injuries. And these uh, results are not uh, published, uh, partly because uh, the barren environment was not really barren, it was kind of enriched. Um, uh, but also from these other studies, we found some uh, effects on, on management. 
Uh, so we can say that the bigger enclosure, the better. The bigger enclosure, the less aggressive encounters and less injuries. There were also a breed effect. Icelandic horses had fewer injuries than other breeds. To sum up the injuries, we had a total of 1,125 skin injuries scored in 478 horses during the study. None of these were in the severe categories 4 to 5, actually 99% within the category 1 to 2 and only 1% in category 3. And the, clearly the highest incidence was the day after grouping. So our conclusions are that the risk of injuries is probably overestimated. And in general, keeping horses in groups should be encouraged. But we should not um, forget the risk of injuries. It's still present, so it's very important to have special cautions. And uh, especially it's a high risk in, in winter when, um, at least in the Nordic countries, the horses are shod with uh, ice studs. And there are many management procedures that can con uh, reduce competitions. I have mentioned that the size of the enclosures, another aspect is uh, feeding. We found less uh, uh, injuries when horses were pastured compared to restricted feeding. And it's a special need of precautions when introducing new horses. And it's important to be able to reduce the risk. And this was also part of, of this Nordic study made by Hartmann, uh, Ilke Hartmann. Okay, I have understood that the questions uh, will be later. Yeah. Mm -hmm.